Hey, it's Squidly. Today I want to deal with 10 mistakes that people make with their quilt or sleeping bag. The first mistake is choosing the wrong temperature rating. Now this is a mistake that I have made before and I've dealt with on this channel. It's choosing a temperature rating when the manufacturer gives maybe several different ratings. Uh, and, and the thing that I've dealt with on this channel is the difference between a comfort rating and a survival rating. They are completely different things. In the case of my sleeping bags that I have from Hike and Bike, the difference is that of about 15 degrees, where the survival rating means you'll live, but you won't be comfortable. You're going to be cold. And the comfort rating, which is not only will you survive, but you will be comfortable during that time. Another element to figure into this is how you sleep. Are you a warm sleeper or are you a cold sleeper? And knowing that is gonna help you determine which temperature rating you're going to need. The second mistake is ignoring size and fit. And basically what I'm talking about here is how does the bag or the quilt fit for your body shape? Is the bag or the quilt too narrow for you? Especially if you're a side sleeper, which I am, which is why I prefer a sleeping bag over a quilt. Also, how tall are you? You know, if you are six seven and you're gonna need a tall sleeping bag, if you don't get one that fits your height, then you're gonna be uncomfortable because it's not gonna come all the way up to your shoulders and your neck. Conversely, if you are not very tall at all, if you're pretty short and pretty a pretty small person, getting one that's too big may on the surface sound like it's not that bad a problem, what you're going to find out is on a cold night, it is going to be a problem because you have too much insulation in that bag for your body to be able to heat up. That bag does not generate its own heat. It's depending on your body heat to fill up that space with warmth and then it will insulate that warmth and keep it in. But if it's too big for you to be able to insulate let me try that again. If it's too big for you to be able to fill up that space with heat, then it's not going to do really anything to keep you warm. Mistake number three is not considering the insulation type. And basically, this is an argument between down and synthetic. Down is lightweight and it is compressible. It's really a perfect material for backpacking for insulation. The problem is once it gets wet, it is useless. It doesn't do anything at all to insulate and keep you warm. Synthetic is heavier and it's more bulky, but if it gets wet, it continues to insulate. Number four is sort of an extension to number three, but it's not considering weight and packability. How much space do you have in your pack for your sleeping bag or your quilt? And also, how many miles do you generally do on a backpacking trip and how much weight are you gonna be willing to carry on those miles? Number five is neglecting care and maintenance. And what this really comes down to is cleaning and storing, because cleaning and storing properly is going to help reduce odors and prevent the degradation of your insulation, which will also prevent your insulation eventually becoming poor quality. And just an example of that is keeping your bag or your quilt when it's in storage, keeping it not compressed. Number six is pairing your quilt or your bag with a sleeping pad of a similar temperature rating. Basically, it doesn't matter what the temperature rating of your sleeping bag or your quilt is. If you're sleeping directly on the ground, the ground is going to suck all of the heat right out of your body and out of that sleeping bag or quilt. Number seven is not testing beforehand. Try your sleeping bag or your quilt at home, out in the backyard, on the deck, wherever, to gauge how well it's going to perform once you get out in the woods. And if it's not performing well, you can't just go inside and say, okay, let's try a different bag or quilt. Number eight is not matching your bag or your quilt to your planned activities. Are you going to be car camping? canoe camping, backpacking, or are you going to be sleeping on the ground or in a hammock? All of these are considerations for choosing the correct sleeping bag or quilt so that you're not, one, taking too much or taking too little. 
Number nine is ignoring features. Draft collars, hoods, and zippers can add a lot of comfort to your sleeping bag, but each thing that you add on adds additional weight. How much of this stuff do you actually need or want? And if it's something that you don't want or need, then continue shopping until you find a brand that offers what you're looking for. Number 10, and I saved this one for last because it's one that might get me in trouble. And it is assuming that all bags or quilts are equal. Factors like brand, materials, and design can impact a bag's performance. The bottom line is do your research. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Those were 10 sleeping bag or quilt mistakes. Tell me what I missed in the comments. And if there's something about what I've said that you disagree, that's fine. Put that in the comments too. Let's have a conversation. And as always, thanks for watching to the end, and I'll see you on the next one.